Hey everybody, Jim here, and today I will be reviewing this DSK-45. I was intending to review a DSK-65, which is what I thought I had purchased, but as you can see there, it says DSK-65 29.5 amps, which is about right for 6,500 watts. And when this one came, I flipped it over on its back, looked right at it, and I was like all excited. Yep, everything is great. Let me see if I can get you focused in there. So, um, there it is. That's much better. So, as you can see on the back here, it says 6,500 watts there, but the rest of it is different from the box that it came in. It says DSK45, and according to the manufacturer's website, that 45 means it's 4,500 watts, which at 20 and a half amps is about right. So I'm going to try to return this. Uh, good luck from, to me with that. It came from China, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and test it before I try to send it back and then do another video for the DSK-65 when I finally get my hands on one. Because I'm trying to see if the DSK is a suitable one-for-one -one swap for a tank water heater here in the southern states, and I'm in Florida, so I'm still talking about you, Arizona and Texas. I'm going to put it in place of this tank and use the 30 amp 10 gauge wire uh, because that's what's already run here. Putting in an EcoSmart 8 would require me to run an 8 gauge wire all the way from the breaker box, but since this 30 amp wire is already here, I'm going to see if I can put a 6500 watt tank water heater. Now granted, today I'm only testing the 4500 watt water heater, but uh, we'll see what the results are. I've got the, thermos, the thermometer. I have to make some hoses to go from 3 quarter inch to half inch uh, female NPT, and I've already seen where this is going to be a bit of a problem, but I'll show you what I'm doing as I'm doing it. One of the problems I noticed right away about this tankless water heater is that the hot out has this white sleeve inside of it and that's going to be a little cumbersome but I think it'll still work because this grommet inside of this stainless steel braided hose will still sit down on it so uh, when, when you're getting your supplies take this into the big box supply store or wherever you go and make sure that you can get at least one full thread on there. I don't think I'm getting a full thread, so I'm expecting this to leak, but I've got another solution. Let me show you. Connected to my existing water tank is this three quarter inch supply line, and boy, it's got a lot of space in there. And if you can see how tiny that hole is coming out of there, a half inch supply line is gonna be plenty, even a five eighths, and I've, I've had real good success with five eighths. But what I'm doing to make this work is putting in this this bushing and it's going to step it down from from three quarters to half inch in PT just like the water heater. Let me get some pipe dope on here before I go any farther. Normally in this application I would use some plumber's tape but one I don't have any nearby and two I don't know how good the structural integrity is on this plastic hose coming out of here. So I'm just going to put some pipe dope on here and see if I can make that work. So this stuff you just pick up at your typical big box store, stir it up real good, get all the juices in there mixed up, and then you lather some on uh, to the inside threads and hopefully to the outside threads. Get them both on there. Now this isn't uh, your typical threaded connection. This is actually sort of a cone shape. So as it tightens down, it pinches and makes a watertight seal. But only if you have something in here because a steel to steel threaded connection isn't very good at keeping water from flowing. Uh, 
All right. And I'm not going to go much more than hand tight because I just do not trust that plastic connector right there. All right, that's hopefully watertight. Let me go ahead and hook it up offline and uh, I'll show you what I've got. Before I go any further, I'm going to see if I can't look inside this thing and I'll tell you why. It's got these three wires and the instruction book doesn't explain where the three wires go. They're just not labeled. So you have red and blue, which I suspect are the two hots, and then this green yellow, which I suspect is neutral, but I want to look inside the thing to see if I can tell. Neat. It's got a lot of stuff in there. Let me see if I can get a better look at it. All right. So this looks like it's an amp meter to determine how much the thing is drawing. And that's fair, it's gonna go off to this control board. And your red goes into this, this device here, and then goes off to there. But where's the green going? The green goes, the green is in fact ground. So you can see where the green comes in, loops around, and then is bolted right onto this part. Okay, so there's the ground. The green, the green yellow is the ground. Okay, good. Well, this isn't very pretty, but it's just going to be here long enough for me to do the test. I've put the... Oh, looks like I've got a leak. Oh, that's, that's just terrific. Well, that was fun. Well, I got water everywhere. It's not a big deal. Fortunately, this area is in an outside lean-to, which doesn't affect the inside of the house very much. So I'm kind of happy about that.
Well, that certainly looks a lot better. That's with the hoses charged, and I'm not seeing any leaks yet. So the takeaway on this is don't use pipe dope on the plastic cold water inlet. All right, I'm going to run the hot water so I fill this tank up with, with water. So this is going to let all the air escape out of the lines and then fill this with water and then I can turn it on. So we'll, we'll see what this looks like when we turn it on. Well, this thing certainly seems much happier now that I put plumber's tape on the threads on that cold water inlet so that the bushing doesn't leak anymore. And I'm checking it and it doesn't seem to be leaking. So I'm pretty excited about that. Let's turn the power on and see what it looks like. pump this up. They say 45 degrees is a good temperature for a shower. Let's see if we actually get that. All right. So it says it's 28 now. Maybe. Neat. All right. So it's ramping up. So if it actually produces 45 degree water, or whatever that is in Fahrenheit, then I'll be very excited. Alrighty, well let's find out what we've got here. Still got a bunch of air in the water. Alright, 108. There's still a lot of air in there. You still think air come through. 110. Let's see. Okay, so that's in Celsius 43.6. Let's turn this up a little bit and see if we can get 120 degree water. It says it'll do 55. Let's see if it does 55 degrees. Now these pipes are pretty big. These are three quarter inch plus the hoses. So it takes a lot of water to flow from the water heater all the way to here. All right, boy, that is really hot. Wow, that, that, that is scalding right there, almost. Alright, so we're at 50, 50.6. And in Fahrenheit, that's 123 degrees. I'm very impressed. For a 20 amp device, that is just awesome. Wow. And I just swapped out my water tank with this device and it's producing really, really hot water. 124 degrees. Let's see how many amps it's drawing. It's making this rattling noise, which I'm guessing is some mechanical flow meter or bubbling caused by the coil. I, I, I don't know. But it's drawing right at 30 amps. So this is not a 20 amp device. This is absolutely a 30 amp device. Uh, let's see what the temperature change actually is at 30 amps. All right. So the water coming out of the ground right now is 84 degrees. I see. That's still really darn good. So at 84 degrees groundwater temperature, it's adding 40 degrees drawing 30 amps. Ah, that, that just doesn't seem very efficient because the EcoSmart 8 adds 60 degrees drawing 33 amps. 
So if this thing is only adding 40 degrees and drawing every bit of 30 amps, I don't know that that's very efficient. Hmm. Uh, that gives me something to think about. So overall, I don't think that this is such a bad device. It cost me 54 bucks, and that included shipping. And it's an even swap out for my tank water heater, which I don't think I'll hook back up. That, that's pretty ugly in there. And uh, it's probably, even though it's not as efficient as the EcoSmart 8, it's still more efficient than a tank water heater. So I might just hold on to this. It's stopped leaking, so I'm excited about that. No more leaks. And uh, yeah, again, in the north of Florida, this can, this silly device, this DSK45 can work as a whole house water heater. I had a little bit of problems getting this hot outlet to uh, stop leaking because it it's just not ready for half inch NPT uh, break, steel, stainless steel braided hoses. But other than that, I'm pretty content. I'm going to uh, say, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend this device. It's not bad. So, oh, by the way, I turned it down to 49 degrees Celsius, and it's only drawing 27 amps now. I'll tell you what, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you learned a lot. Just one more thing I wanted to add before I closed out this video. This device can be had on the internet for under $60 with free shipping all day long. Uh, pick them up on eBay, just this simple red device, and it comes in multiple colors. Uh, but don't be fooled, this device over here, the same device but with white color, for $150 is still 6,500 watts, 220 volts. It's not producing any additional features that justify the extra $90 in price. Additionally, I didn't test the shower, but uh, the shower is going to flow at about the same rate as that sink faucet if you have a low flow shower head. Now, you're not going to get a luxurious shower with 1.25 or 1.5 gallons per minute, but this device really isn't targeted toward the luxury shower customer. This is more a um, pragmatic solution for guys who just want to go tankless without running new wires and new plumbing uh, and want to spend about 60 bucks. So. I, I learned a lot making this video and I hope you did too. Thanks so much for watching.